What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video, we're looking at regions, specifically filled regions and masking regions, as well as what the differences are between them, when to use them, where to use them. First, let's look at filled regions. When I click, click on filled regions, I've got the same line styles that, to choose from for the, the border of the region itself that I have for really any other kind of line that I would create in Revit. I've got the same uh, drawing tools here for lines. That's nothing new. I've got the ability to chain the lines together. That's a default. I can put an offset or a radius just like you do with all kinds of lines you draw, whether it's a detail line, model line, whatever it might be. So I'm not going to cover that so much, but what I am going to cover are the regions themselves. So let's draw just a basic square region there, and I'm using a basic Revit out-of-the-box template. So I've got this these basic filled regions right here. So let's just work with the diagonal crosshatch. I will accept that, and we can see that I've got a diagonal crosshatch filled region right there. So what is a filled region? A filled region is just using a series of hatch patterns to cover an element or to show hatch patterns over something in 2D views. Remember, it's only in 2D views. It's much like detail lines. It's a detail component. It's a detail item. So it's only going to show up in 2D views or on sheets. What we can do now is look at the type properties. This is where all the information that's built into the filled region will be. You have the option of changing that foreground and background pattern, just like you have with any other hatch pattern or any other material where you'd find these hatch patterns. They're all the same throughout the entire project. These are, again, the defaults. Hit OK there. You can change the color of those. Again, you've got a foreground and background that's new with Rev 2020. That's great. The line weight, you could change the line weight to something thicker if you want the lines to be thicker. And do note that the line weight within the filled regions will only affect the hatch pattern line weight. So if I hit apply, you can see it's even too thick for me to see. So let's change that to a 3. I'll hit apply. And we can see when I zoom in here that these lines are now pin weight line weights of 3 as opposed to 1. So I'll undo that. We can see them go back to 1. You can see they're, very, they're much thinner now make a little more sense put that back at one now they're thinner right there but what I can do the, the thing that is new and I guess this is considered to be new in Revit 2020 uh, before now it was not called masking there's this option to mask before Revit 2020 you were you're forced to choose whether a filled region was opaque or transparent if it's transparent that means you can see through the hatch patterns if it's opaque, you can't see through it. It's just, it's that clear. So the masking works the same. It's just a checkbox. The idea is that it's the same, but it makes more sense. So if I have masking checked, which I do, I'll hit OK. When I move this detail item, this filled region over the walls, I shouldn't see them. And with the deselected, I can't see. That makes perfect sense. And now if I go to uncheck masking, therefore it's transparent, I can hit apply and I can see completely through the filled region to the walls behind it. That's perfect. I'll turn that back on. One thing I like to do a lot to give you some more variation with filled regions is actually add some transparency to it. So if you go to override by element, you can do whatever you normally can to override detail elements where you can affect the projection lines, the surface patterns, foreground, background. I wouldn't mess with those at all because you're already dealing with that with filled regions and double dipping is just going to confuse you and everyone else. So I would just hide that. And maybe we want a 50% transparency on top of our filled region there. So as soon as I hit, okay, I've got 50%, you could clearly see that the walls behind this filled region are able to be seen, but they're at 50%. So the, the black is now gray. And if we look at the filled region again, we can see it is masking. So like it's fully masking, but it's now 50% transparent. With the 50% transparency still on, if I uncheck masking and hit apply, it's going to look like any other filled region that is unmasked. That's just It's just the way it looks. That's how it's going to function. So if you want transparency, it's going to have to have masking on. That's something to remember. That's going to be filled regions. That's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to do. It's mainly about where you want the hatch patterns and knowing that it's only going to be it's view specific. So you're going to have to copy them to other views if you want them in the same place or to look the same or to use the same one. It's, you're going to have to copy those. 
So let's look at masking regions. When I click masking regions, I have the same options with the lines as well as the drawing options. And if I now apply this over here, the, the whole idea of a masking region is that it masks. The only options I'll have with a masking region are that it will be white, and, and when I say I have options, these are the, this is what's going to happen. For masking regions, it will be white. You, ha you can't change it from white. It will mask, which means it's 100% opaque. You can't do anything about that. And it's going to just block out everything that's behind it. So it's just, it's white. So as soon as I hit OK, there we go. I can see everything right there. It's just white. There's, you know, there's nothing behind it. So that's masking, like, that's with masking region, that's it. I have nothing else I can do. And you'll know it's a masking region if you click on it. You can see detail item. And if I click on the filled region, I can also see detail item. But I can clearly see filled region right there and the type of filled region that it is. But when I click back on the masking region, there's nothing here. I can't change the type properties. There's, there's nothing I can do, but it tells me the area. Okay. You'll know it's a masking region if you can't change anything and you don't see anything. Looking back at the filled region, I can clearly see information that it's a filled region. One thing you might be wondering is what happens if I make a white filled region? So let's make a white filled region. I'm going to duplicate this. I'll call it white. I will change the foreground fill pattern to solid and change the color to white. I'm going to change this type back to the diagonal transparent and then I'll create a new masking region with our white and I will draw a white here. I will move these over and we can clearly see that it looks exactly like this masking region. You might be wondering, well then why don't you just use filled regions? Well, you don't use filled regions necessarily just because masking regions do that for you. That's what they're meant for. You don't have any extra weird options for what it is. And whereas in here, like maybe you do want it to be white, but you could add a different foreground onto it. You could do that. You could change uh, the foreground material or fill pattern to something else and the background to white so where it looks kind of the same. But I, I wouldn't necessarily do that. But you might be wondering also, like, what happens if we add transparency to this? So I could, I could add transparency to this solid white filled region. So let's go down and add 50% transparency to this white filled region. I hit OK and it works just like we expected. It's 100% opaque because it is, and I made it that way, it's masked. And I can see through it 50%. The same, the wall looks 50%. It's gray. It's clearly there. We can see through it. Whereas the masking region, we can't. Now, let's see what we can do. We can actually change the transparency of masking regions, and it will look the exact same. It looks the exact same. So, again, you might be wondering, why the heck would you use a masking region? Well, you would use a masking region because... You use masking regions for a particular purpose, a single purpose to mask. And generally you're not trying to show transparency when you're masking, you're trying to like physically mask it out, like fully see nothing, the white. You can make these lines invisible lines and at that point you're dealing with just a blank portion, which is, that's kind of the, that's what I do most of the time as far as seeing nothing, like masking it out completely. So I would recommend just using masking regions for white and anything that's not white is a filled region. Just, just kind of know that. I wouldn't use solid white filled regions. That's just me. You're going to confuse things. People, everyone else working in the project. What I'll do now is I'll change this to a, a different, different filled region there. I'm gonna actually copy this, change this to another filled region. And so right now I'll turn this transparency off and the one thing, last thing I will show is the arrangement. So when you click on a, a filled region, you have the option to edit the boundary, of course, but you could also arrange it. And by arranging it, it means, imagine you have multiple detail items, and they're all 2D, remember? So if they're all 2D, how do you arrange them, like one on top of another? Like, it's imagine stickers. You layer stickers on top of each other. So how do you deal with that? Well, there's this, there's these options up here with under the arrange. It's bring to front, bring to back. Those are the options you could choose. 
So if I wanted to bring this masking region in front of everything else, I could just hit bring to front and it'll bring it to the front. And now I can see halfway through 50% through everything beyond this filled region. Great. I could also take the one here and bring this one to the front. I could also take it from the front all the way to the back. So it's behind every 2d element. And I could also take this one that's in the middle and I could, there's a drop down for each of these bring to front, bring to back, and I could bring forward, which is just gonna bring it forward one layer, I guess, if you will. I could bring it backward and then I can send it backward again. So it's just all about arranging the layers on top of each other and all these 2D components. And really that's gonna do it. That's it for filled regions. You know, you can change the different line types. You can make the correct hatch pattern that you need for something. That's what they're for. They're, they are meant for 2D details more, more than likely. And again, always remember to use masking regions to mask only. That's all they're going to do. That's all they're for. That's what I'd recommend using them for. Do not use white filled regions. Just my opinion, but I highly recommend that you don't. If you enjoyed this video, please demolish that like button. It really helps. Also subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming out soon. I sure hope to see you in the next one. Hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.